Hi, John. Um, it's obviously incredibly daunting, basically, to sort of the historical past, and it could be easily overwhelmed with the players. But it, 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 is it somewhere that you look to players to really sort of stand up and be inspired by it? Can, can it be an inspirational place for the players in the squad tomorrow night? Yeah, I think so. It's an arena. I was just speaking, actually, about the... I've only played it once in my career, England-Spain. And we lost 2-0, and I don't think I got a kick. <laughs> Chavian in the Esther were in their heyday. But I absolutely remember the size of the stadium. So, for our players, uh, some young players that we've got, we know in the squad, but also we have some players that have achieved a lot. Champions League winners, World Cup winners, and these things. So, um, I don't think it's something completely new to them. But, of course, this is a stadium that and the quarterfinals an occasion and that we have to play the occasion because levels go up at this point in the competition um, but we have to come in with a belief that we can perform under that pressure. Okay, we'll go to Matt Dunn. Matt Dunn. Uh, Frank, the players have got to do that and you're uh, old in the tooth, 44 year old now, but do you still dream when you come to places like this? Oh yeah, it's, this is amazing. I. Um, I've been fortunate enough to manage in the Champions League in two seasons. Um, and um, as a player, it was always the, the special competition. And so to be here as a, as a manager, when, uh, particularly when uh, a week ago, today even, I, I didn't know I'd be here, is a huge honour for me, of course. Um, and was you know, a big part of the, my thought process of you know, taking on the challenge here. This is an amazing challenge for me personally, as well as obviously for us as a, as a team and a club. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very looking forward to the uh, to the occasion myself. Some obvious, well, sorry, there's some obvious parallels with Roberto Di Matteo and what happened ten years ago. What, what can you draw from that? What's your memories of that? And 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 have you spoken to him at all? No, I, I haven't spoken to Robbie. Um, I exchanged some some messages of a few people. Obviously, a lot of people Chelsea related, Gus Hiddink and, and ex managers and <clears throat> people in the game, but. I haven't spoken to Robbie. I think it's, um, there are parallels in probably a simple sense. You know, we're ex-players, you know, but I think Robbie was, the year Robbie was here, he was an assistant, but had a big awareness of the squad and then got the job earlier in the, the, the year than I did. And I was part of that process, obviously, and did an amazing job. I remember big parts of why he achieved what he achieved. So I think um, my situation is different in practice. Um, I do have an awareness of the squad, but not a close hand to all of them. But um, yeah, I think we have to be. I have to be careful making that parallel because also we have very tough games in front of us starting tomorrow. So it's a, there's a lot of work to be done, but we're very committed to trying to, to, to if we can, um, create our own little bit of history. But the steps in front of us are, are very difficult, of course. Okay, we'll go to Nizar Hi Frank, this squad seems to perform better in the Champions League than the Premier League. Is there something about this competition or, or this group of players even that, that sort of plays better in Europe than they, they do in the league? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I understand the question and if you isolate this year as well um, because I've viewed it from the outside and I think there have been challenges this year that, um, and the Premier League is also one of the greatest challenges in world football because it's um, it's tough week in, week out, and uh, those challenges have obviously taken us to a place where we don't want to be as Chelsea Football Club. So I think in the Champions League, sometimes it offers you some, uh, a bit of escapism from that, um, a different speed of game, knockout football. Those things can all um, contribute to, to getting a different success in the same season. I think when you get to this stage in a competition, though, I think you know you're playing teams at the level of Real Madrid, teams at the level of who will be waiting for either team in the semi-final. So I think now those sort of, those, the comparisons are, are sort of pretty worthless. It's all about what's in front of you. Gary? Frank, hello, back here. Hi, hi. I've not seen you, so congratulations. Thanks. A couple of questions in one. Um, reports that uh, Todd Burley took advice from James Corden about appointing you. And when it comes to winning this competition, are Real Madrid in a league of their own? Wow. Um, yeah, I, I saw the headline of uh, James Corden, um, and um, I'm, I'm absolutely not aware whether it's true or not. But it's obviously a great he headline to to put together with um, casually from the outside. So I think um, when I look at the success 
uh, of Todd Bowley, the owners of Chelsea Football Club. Um, I think you have to respect that success and respect the idea that they will probably make decisions based more than a conversation um, with one person. Um, so that's as much as I'm going to give your two questions. Gentlemen, there. Hola, Frank. Andrés Rubio para Televisión Española. ¿En español? Sí. Yeah. Después de lo que se vivió aquí el año pasado, la, la remontada del Real Madrid, ¿qué le dice mañana el entrenador del Chelsea a sus jugadores antes de saltar al césped del Bernabéu? Gracias. Okay. I think, um... Everything, every new year in football brings a new story. And um, so I think it's, uh, the, the year before that, Chelsea came here and was successful in the Champions League, in the knockout stage. Last year, um, Real Madrid produced, a, I wouldn't say a comeback, but it was a, an incredible game that changed in the last moments of when Chelsea looked to be strong and in Real Madrid. One thing I will say, having watched Real Madrid and, um, and having a relationship with Carlo Ancelotti, who has who's been incredible in his time here, in, that the players have to understand is that this is a special arena and a special football club and anything can happen and some things you can't control. So we have to control what we can control with what we have now, understand the quality of the player in the Real Madrid team lots of quality throughout that team. Um, but I, my focus will not, will not be on last year, it will be on what we can do now as a team. Gentlemen at the front. Hello, I'm Marcelo Doval from Dossi Futbolera. Hi. Uh, what kind of game do you have to play tomorrow in order to get alive to the second game in, in England? I think we have to um, understand the strengths of the Real Madrid team, which means uh, in terms of their qualities in possession and their individual talent. Um, we have to be very, very disciplined with our, our game uh, off the ball against, against Real Madrid, understand the threats. There's some very clear threats individually in their team, uh, ways that Real Madrid li like to score and regularly score and how they want to control the game. So we have to be defensively good against that. But I think we also have to show our own strengths in our game and uh, the players will be aware of how we want to approach the game. We have to have belief. We have to follow the idea because in a high-level game, the biggest thing can sometimes be the mentality of following through with what the idea is under pressure. Um, so we have to be, at this level, you have to be spot on with your game to take it back to Stamford Bridge next week in front of our home supporters. Hi, Frank. Um, um, Sorry, I was going to say, it's very unusual for a, a, a coach to come in and the first big European game is a, is a quarter-final, the Champions League. But in a strange way, does it feel different for you because you got Chelsea into the knockout stages last time, but it was sort of taken away from you. So it must feel like you've almost earned the right to, to be here anyway. I, I don't link them. Um, I know uh, my pl part played in the last success and it ended when I left the club as far as I was concerned, but my part was probably more than anything qualifying for the Champions League the year before in a tough season of, with a young squad. And that's, that was, you know, we went through the, the group stage, but very clearly my time en ended and uh, full credit to Thomas and the team from then on. So I don't, I don't link them. I'm just very proud to come back, you know, and, and manage the team at this time uh, to try and help because we also have the league games till the end of the season to try and work with the younger players, develop a little bit, but also, importantly, try and get results. So I'm just um, very happy, but I don't, I don't link it to the past, but I, I can take... Um, I know I've managed in this competition before. I know I've managed against big teams in this competition before, so I'm not daunted at all by the fact. Um, in fact, I'm more excited than anything um, that I get the opportunity. Tom? Hi, uh, Frank. Hi. You mentioned about the aura of playing in the Bernabeu mm. and also earlier about the fact there are some young players in your team and squad, but also players who have um, won, uh, made, won a, made a load of achievements. But do, do you have the leaders in the squad as well? Because it is a young team, isn't it? So do you have the leaders to deal with that environment, this environment, and get the team through it? 
Well, I think you can only become a leader in, in action. You know, it's no, it's no point in be, being called a leader until you show why and how you do it on the pitch. And I, I understand your question in the point that um, we have a lot of players who have a lot of titles. So we can't call ourselves, you know, completely young because if I go through the, the squad, I can see a lot. But also in terms of natural leaders, I think modern leaders have changed in the game in the dressing room. I, can't think, I don't think we can ever try and look 10 or 15 years back and try and replicate what a squad was or what leaders were. But for sure, where we have you know, brought in some younger players over the course of this season, um, we have to give them a chance to develop into being the leaders that we want them to be. So, you know, Enzo's doing the, the, the media through there and you'll speak to him, but in him I see a leader. But he's, he's 21, 22 years of age. I think it's very difficult for us to sort of really equate him to being that. So he'll have to find his way. Games like tomorrow are a great chance to perform and show that personality that makes you a proper leader. Hi, Frank. Uh, just on the team news, are uh, Thiago, Mason and N'Golo ready to be involved tomorrow? And then also, in terms of the belief and, and character that you need to show, this team's character has been questioned at times this season when there have been setbacks. It seems they haven't responded that well. How do you feel that you can affect that? Well, they're all fit. The ones you mentioned are all in, in the squad. Um, the three players you mentioned are, are good and they're here. Um, in terms of character, I think it's, um, I think it's usual. And it's normal in a, in a season where a club like us falls below what the levels we want, the, the character gets questioned. It's one of the first things probably to get questioned at times in, in defeat, more often than not. And the only thing the players can do is prove it um, on pitch, where people can view it and where they can see it. There's a lot of work that I and we do behind the scenes on the training pitch, around the dressing room, talking with the players. And you can only... Um, my job is to, to convey to them the, the need uh, to train at a level, to have a mentality at a certain level, individually and as a group. And then the rest, they have to show it. It's no good, you can talk as much as you want, but the players have to show that sort of stuff on the pitch. So I'm absolutely not questioning the fact that they have a lot of character in that group because I've seen the dressing room and I understand football and there's, there is character. Nobody wants to, to not win a football match, for instance. Um, but sometimes players can take a hit on confidence and something that can be a lack of confidence can look like a lack of character, things like that. So that's my job to quite quickly, because this is, I've only been here a short time, to find those areas, find out which players need help or the group, how it needs help, try and give it the help it needs, and then it's up to them. Hi, Frank. Um, Hi. Just one about Angolo. Um, he's been one of the world's best midfielders for so many years, but there's, there's never a guarantee a 32-year-old coming off a long injury layoff can, can get back to that level. Do, do you think he can get there, and, and just how important will he be for you tomorrow? I think Ngolo is a special player. Um, and I understand what you mean when you talk about consistency and the, the problem, the, the, the difficulties Ngolo's had recently were injuries. Um, but in terms of coming back and playing at a really high level, I've witnessed him do it. He did it in the, in the Super Cup final for me against Liverpool a few years ago. He, was, he had to pass a fitness test, hadn't trained for a long time, and he was best player on the pitch for 120 minutes, pretty much. So I think he has the capacity to do that because he's a special player. So hopefully he can do that for us because he's that high level of player. And when we miss him as a club, we miss him because of how good he is. So it's a positive for this that he's back for sure. OK, we'll do two more. Gentleman in the middle and then finish with Simon Johnson. Aquí, Frank. Diego Plaza para el Chiringuito. Hablaba de la calidad individual de la plantilla del Real Madrid. No sé qué jugador del Real Madrid le preocupa más y si tiene algún plan especial para parar a alguno, ya sea Vinicius, Benzema, Rodrigo. Oh, that's a difficult question to ask me to name one, one player. Because once I start naming one, two, three, you'll ask about why not four, five, because it's a team of a lot of good individuals. I've got a huge amount of respect for the team. Um, I think my biggest respect for the Real Madrid team and the success over the years is when I look at the players that have real longevity, that are serial winners, Benzema, Modric, Cruz, these players, because... Um, to appreciate what it takes at this level to win so regularly, keep motivation, affect the team around you and be the leaders of the group, which I think quite clearly they are. 
I think is what you know makes them the special players that they are. So I have huge admiration for them, and they all, in a different way, have these incredible qualities. And of course, Vinicius Junior as well as a young player is is an incredible quality. So the, the the way we have to try and work against it is be very clear to the players about those threats. Um, and in certain areas of the pitch where we know the threats are repetitive, Vinicius Junior 1v1, these sort of things, Benzema's movement in the top area of the pitch, the players have to be aware of it and we have to deal with it. Um, but they're very high-level players. Thank you. Final question, Simon Johnson. Hey, Frank. Hi, Simon. Um, just sort of wondering, can you play on the fact that, that Real Madrid are heavy favourites here, that that they're the ones that are under more pressure or are Chelsea the ones under pressure because this is the last chance you can win anything? And, and secondly, just touching on Tony Rudiger, obviously there's a player that, you, that played under you, just sort of like what you make of him as a player and, and how things were with you and him when you were together. Yeah, I think um, to, the, to, your, to the first half of the question, I think there's pressure on both teams because of the size of both clubs. And I think when you get to this stage, whatever the, the, the reason is, there'll be pressure. Um, are, are Real Madrid favourites? Yes. Um, and I understand why, because of the difficulties of our season and those things. I don't think that's a problem. I think those things are, are fine. The, the, there's no better um, carrot in football than trying to prove people wrong or you know, be an underdog and have a, a good result. I think it's one of the best things I've been part of that and uh, on both sides, actually. So I think that's a nice challenge for us. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. And in terms of the pressure, I'm not worried about that. Football at this level is pressure. And um, if you can't handle the pressure, then, you know, you're not a big club or you're not a big player or part, part, participant in it. Um, in, in the point of Tony Rudiger, I think Tony Rudiger has done fantastically well. Um, I, when I last saw him at, uh, as Everton manager against Chelsea, I, I wished him well with the Madrid move was happening at that time. And my relationship was with fine. A lot of people obviously like to, to uh, speculate on relationships outside a football club. And as a manager of, of Chelsea, which I was and which I am again now, you have 25, 27 players, you have decisions to make every week. Antonio Rudiger played a lot for me. Um, but obviously our story ended and the story continued part of a successful Premier, uh, Champions League winning team and was a big part in it and now he had his move so good luck to him. Good luck to any professional who works as hard as, as Tony had in his career from I know his you know, early part of his career to be coming and playing for Chelsea and Real Madrid. I believe he deserves it. Okay, we'll end it there. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, this press conference will be fully in Spanish from Enzo's side, so we'll do the translation for any English questions. We're going to start with Gary at Sky. Sky here. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers, Joe. Hi, Enzo. Hello. Nice to see you. Um, it's been a difficult 10 days. Oh, I'll let you do that. Go on. It's okay. Nice to see you. It's obviously been a, an unusual and difficult week, 10 days. What, what has Frank said to you as a squad of players? What's his message to you all, Frank Lampard? Buenas tardes para todos. Bueno, Frank habló con el grupo un poco. Eh, nada. Dijo que, que mantengamos cabeza, que, que Chelsea es un, un club a nivel historia muy grande, que, que lo íbamos a sacar adelante. Eh, nada, con toda anécdota de que cuando ganaron la Champions 2012, eh, nos dijo que estaba en su peor momento de futbolístico de Chelsea. Así que nada, es un gran ejemplo para, para nosotros. Y nada, mañana daremos lo mejor para representar a Chelsea de la mejor manera. 
Hola Enzo, aquí de frente, muy buenas tardes, soy Antón Meana de la cadena SER. Quería preguntarte por el Madrid. ¿Qué te parece el Madrid? Lo viste primero desde Lisboa, ahora desde, desde Londres. El Madrid en la Copa de Europa, sus jugadores en el centro del campo, donde tú te mueves, Modri, Cross. ¿Qué te, qué te inspira o qué te dice el Madrid, si te pregunto por, por ellos? Bueno, sabemos que, que el Madrid es un, un club muy histórico, con mucha historia, con jugadores de, de gran jerarquía, pero... Nada, sabemos, confiamos en nuestro trabajo de, de mañana, que, que haremos un buen partido. Y volviendo a la pregunta, Modric y, y Kroos, dos jugadores de gran jerarquía, que han ganado todo en el Madrid y una gran inspiración para, para todos los chicos. ¿Qué tal, Enzo? Aquí Melchor Ruiz, de la cadena COPE. Oye, ¿qué es lo que más preocupa de, del Real Madrid? Y, y sobre todo, ¿cómo afrontáis este partido teniendo en cuenta que la vuelta es en Stanford Bridge? Yo no sé si este Real Madrid por su historial, por lo que está haciendo en la Champions, asusta, da miedo y sobre todo habiéndole visto ante el Liverpool, no sé si has visto el partido más de una vez eh, y sacamos conclusiones. ¿Qué es lo que más preocupa de este Real Madrid? Sobre todo teniendo en cuenta eso, que el partido de vuelta va a ser en Stamford Bridge. Bueno, miedo, miedo no, respeto sí, porque eh, no deja de ser un partido de fútbol. Sabemos la, la gran jerarquía que tienen los delanteros del Madrid, tanto Benzema como Vinicius, Rodrigo, Valverde... Pero eh, trataremos de restarlo con, con nuestros defensores, hacer un buen trabajo defensivo y llevar a cabo eh, el, el partido de la mejor manera para definirnos de Stanford Bridge. ¿Qué tal, Enzo? Martín Einstein de ESPN. Te quería preguntar eh, respecto a, a tu transformación eh, a partir de, de la Copa del Mundo. El Madrid es eh, un equipo que que tiene mucha confianza, ¿no? que no se da nunca por vencido, que fue un ejemplo la eliminatoria o la temporada pasada, eh, cómo sacó las eliminatorias adelante con remontadas, lo que viste con Argentina en el Mundial, eh, tuvo esa resiliencia, ¿no? esa capacidad de, de reponerse ante momentos muy complicados dentro del partido. ¿Qué te da eso eh, para volcarlo en partidos como estos en la Champions League? ¿Qué te dio esa experiencia? Buena pregunta, la verdad... Eh, momentos adversos en el fútbol siempre los hay eh, los dos partidos en el mundial me han dejado mucho aprendizaje he aprendido mucho que en la adversidad hay que ser fuerte hay que mantener la cabeza firme y, y hay que mirar para adelante porque nada, eh, Holanda no, ha, no empató el partido en los últimos minutos y jugamos eh, tiempo extra eh, pero siempre mantuvimos la cabeza mantuvimos el foco y, y me dejó una gran enseñanza que que, sí, que siempre hay que ir para adelante y nunca hay que ir por vencido. Así que el Mundial me ha dejado mucho aprendizaje en eso, eh, en, no, eh, en la adversidad ser fuerte. Así que nah, eh, he aprendido mucho en, en el Mundial de, de esa forma. Enzo, Marcelo Doval para dosis futbolera. Esta va a ser tu primera vez jugando en este campo. Eh, Has vivido muchas cosas en muy poco tiempo, de River al Benfica, del Benfica al Chelsea. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo sientes la presión? ¿O es que en el Mundial te la has quitado toda? ¿O en la presión de la Champions es diferente? Eh, Rudiger hablaba hace un, unos pocos días, decía que él podía sentir que los equipos en la Champions tenían miedo. ¿El, el, el Chelsea llega aquí con miedo a no poder, no poder llevarse un resultado que le permita ir con vida la, al segundo partido? Bueno, eh, trato de no, de no tener presión en el fútbol, sino de disfrutar cada partido. Sé que la responsabilidad que, que generan estos partidos, porque son de fase definitiva, eh, para mí, para mí no, no hay presión, siempre trato de, de disfrutar. Eh, y, y miedo no, miedo no, no, no hay que tener en el fútbol, hay que, hay que disfrutar y mañana ojalá sea un gran espectáculo. Hola Enzo, Germán Carrera para Voladí.com. Primero quería preguntarte si le generó algo especial en la previa de este partido tan importante, el cambio de entrenador, y si a vos te sugiere particularmente algo especial también jugar en el Santiago Bernabéu por tu pasado en River. Gracias. No, no, no lo cambio nada porque el grupo se mantiene fuerte, es muy fuerte mentalmente. Eh, trataremos, trataremos de hacer lo mejor posible mañana, un gran partido. Y, ¿Cuál era la otra pregunta, perdón? Ah, es, eh, sí, sabemos el, la historia que tiene el Bernabéu, es un gran estadio, muy, muy feliz de, de jugar acá, un partido eh, muy especial y nada, me trae bonitos recuerdos. Eh, 
Enzo, uh, you've said about how you're not afraid, and I don't believe for a minute you are. But um, is this an opportunity for you to show that you are this player that such a large sum of money was spent on? And a chance to show the Chelsea fans this is why the club believed you and backed you to this amount. It's a sum that you had no say in, but one that you have to carry with you. Is this your big chance? No, pre presión no, no tengo. Trato, voy a disfrutar el partido. No, no tengo que demostrar, creo que nada a nadie. Eh, no deja de ser un partido de fútbol, como dije antes. Eh, voy a dar lo mejor de mí, como, como, siempre, como siempre digo. Hello, Enzo. Um, how difficult has the last week or so been for, for you and the rest of the players in terms of the amount of managers you've played under? There's three different guys that have picked the team, essentially. And, and would you admit that that isn't the ideal preparation for Real Madrid? Sí, obvio que dentro de, de la temporada cambiar entrenador eh, constantemente no, no es nada fácil para, para un grupo. Pero el grupo está fuerte, está unido y sabemos lo que significa la Champions. Estamos mentalmente preparados para jugar el partido mañana. Hola, aquí eh, Diego Plaza del Chiringuito. En nuestro programa, eh, Jorge D'Alessandro, el técnico argentino, eh, te definió, junto a tus compañeros del centro del campo de Argentina en el Mundial, como un Ferrari. No sé qué te parece esa definición y si te sientes ya así en el Chelsea, al igual que en la selección. Bueno, agradecido a Jorge siempre que, que habla a mí, habla maravilla, así que agradecerle públicamente por, por todos los, los mensajes que me ha dedicado. Y todavía no, no siento que he llegado a mi nivel top en Chelsea. Eh, llevo poco tiempo, eh, es una liga diferente, como dije antes. Es otra ciudad, otra vida, así que nada, tratando, tratando de adaptarme de la mejor manera eh, junto a mi familia, que no es, no es nada fácil adaptarse a un país nuevo. Pero bueno, tratando de apoyar a mis compañeros en el cuerpo técnico para, para hacer lo mejor posible y lo más rápido posible dentro del campo. Hi Enzo, um, I wanted to ask you, Frank Lampard said that you're uh, potentially a leader for the future. Did you come here to be a leader and, and sort of bring that personality on the pitch because some people say maybe Chelsea lacks some leadership? Bueno, muchas gracias. Eh, siempre eh, soñé con, con ser un líder en un vestuario porque cuando empecé en mis raíces de fútbol Siempre eh, quise ser como un ejemplo o, o ser un líder dentro de la historia, ayudar a mis compañeros, estar para ellos. Y bueno, que me hayan definido así a, a tan temprana edad, para mí es un orgullo. Agradecer a Frank por, por las palabras y tratar de siempre dar lo mejor de mí y ser un, un ejemplo para, para todos. Ok, gracias, guys. Finished. Finished. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah.